in the face of this economic hardship, the House of Representatives has called on Mr. President Bola Metinubu not to take away the oxygen Nigerians are breathing. Let me also use the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to borrow a word of our President. When he spoke then, he said, let the government allow the poor to breathe. Today, we are not only calling for government to allow the poor to breathe, we are calling of government not to remove the cylinder that the poor are already living under oxygen. If you remove the cylinder, we are not talking about breathe, we are talking about taking people's life. Government have to put human face. Government should listen to Nigerians. Whatever it will cause, whatever policies that can cause hardship to Nigerians, government should look at it and review it and allow the poor to breathe. And Let the poor breathe. Don't suffocate them. We have that responsibility. This is coming after the recent announcement of the increase in price of fuel, PMS. You, my very respected colleagues, for the opportunity. My name is Kingsley Chinda. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, I am drawing strength Orobu from... Kumo. Order. Order, Orobu Kumo. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Who is not doing this my dear colleagues, I draw authority and strength from Order A through 5 of our House Rule to pray that we consider this matter as one that is urgent and of very great importance to the Nigerian populace, is the issue of the increase in the pump price of petroleum products, which took effect last week. And you can all agree with me that ever since this happened, particularly for those of us who are seated in these green chambers, our people have been on us. Nigerians have been groaning under the pain. Every other sector has been affected. And we are expected to discuss this issue as one that is important and urgent, else we might compel Nigerians to take the laws into their hands and discuss it on our behalf. I would therefore want to pray that we see this matter as one that is urgent and very important. And again, let me also inform us that we have 111 members that are sponsoring this motion across political line, across tribe, across religion, because this affects all of us as Nigerians. I would therefore pray that we see this as very important and urgent for this House to deliberate this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Honorable Dr. Patrick Umar. I represent the entire people of Ikorek Bene. Esienudim, Oberoka Afidu constituency, my proud son of Akwaibum State. The Speaker, I rise to second the motion that this is urgent enough to be taken by no less a member than the minority leader of this House. I so second. Those in support Order, of the motion please. should say aye. aye. Those against should say nay. The eyes have it. The second leg. Honorable Agilo. Can't say anything today. Thank you, Your Excellency, Mr. Speaker, the Ian Zazo, GCOM. My name is Umar Agilo. I'm a member representing Makarpi and Kudan Federal Constituency. I am from the northwestern Nigeria of Kaduna State. I rise to second the very important motions like this, ably moved by my leader, Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, I so second. Thank you, sir. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is our event. Rabuchenda, please proceed. Thank Respected honorable colleagues, I remain Ali Issa JC, PhD, representing 
Balanga Biliri Federal Constituency from Gombe State. Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues, this motion is timely and is a very important motion. Today, because of the increase in the fuel prices, a lot of prices have, been, have escalated. Prices of food items, prices of transportation, and even healthcare services. I am happy that this house, that is the people's house, more than 100 members decided to bring this notice so that government should look at this with a human face. Mr. Speaker, Section 14.2b of our Constitution clearly stated that the primary purpose of any government is to provide security and welfare of the people. Our concern should be the welfare of Nigerians, which I believe is not only in my constituency that the masses or the poor or the people are suffering. I believe most of the constituencies, people are suffering because of this increase. Let me also use the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to borrow a word of our president. When he spoke then, he said, let the government allow the poor to breed. Today, we are not only calling for government to allow the poor to breed, we are calling of government not to remove the cylinder that the poor are already living under oxygen. If you remove the cylinder, we are not talking about breed, we are talking about taking people's life. Government have to put human face. Government should listen to Nigerians. Whatever it will cause, whatever policies that can cause hardship to Nigerians, government should look at it and review it and allow the poor to breed. I appeal to all members to give all the necessary support to this very important and timely bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I believe that since this motion is sponsored by all members of this House that comprises of all political parties, my, may, a lot of members of this House, 101 members, 111 members in this House signed to support this motion. I believe they are speaking for their constituents. If there is any member that believes his constituents want the fuel price to keep on increasing. Leader, I it's think you are going to come out, out of the context. Thank you, Mr. Thank Speaker. You God bless you all. Yes, my dear Chair. I'm cooking gas in the country. The House, aware that Nigeria as an oil producing nation, has historically relied on petroleum product and cooking gas, LPG, as essential sources of energy for both domestic and industrial purposes. Concerned that in the recent month, the prices of petrol and cooking gas have skyrocketed and continue to do so, creating an unsustainable financial burden on ordinary Nigerians and excavating the cost of living. Noted, noting that the removal of fuel subsidies coupled with global oil price volatility and the depreciation of the Naira has contributed significantly to the rising cost of petrol at the pump and cooking gas for households. Worried that the escalating fuel and gas prices are impacting the cost of transportation, food, essential goods and health care, further increasing inflation and pushing many families into deeper financial hardship. Pars are concerned that businesses, particularly small and medium-sized enterprises, are struggling to manage their operational costs due to increased fuel prices, threatening economic stability and job security. Acknowledge that the federal government has previously announced plans to require domestic refineries and boost local refining capacity to address some of these issues, but has yet to deliver significant results in this regard. Mindful that the rising cost of petrol and cooking gas poses significant threat to livelihood of millions of Nigerians and, and check 
inflation pressure caused by increased prices can lead to social arrest, increased poverty rate, and negative long-term economic effect. Also worried that a less urgent and pragmatic step are taken to control the rising cost of petrol and cooking gas, the nation will go into economic crisis, leading into negative outcomes like increased crime rate and mortality. Resolve to call on the federal government to reverse the recent form price hike and take immediate steps to stabilize petrol and cooking gas prices through targeted intervention, such as temporary price relief measures, tax reduction, or subsidies on LPG for low-income households. Call on the National Nigerian Petroleum Corporation, NNPCL, Ministry of Petroleum Resources, and other relevant agencies to expedite the repair stroke maintenance of domestic refineries and increase local refining capacity as a stopgap measure to reduce the dependence on imported refined petroleum products. Urge the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to implement monetary policies that will mitigate the adverse effect of full price hike on inflation, particularly with regards to essential goods and services. Encourage the federal government to explore alternative energy sources and diversify the country's energy mix to reduce reliance on petrol and gas promote renewable energy solutions that are more sustainable and affordable in the long run. Encourage state government to adopt policies that alleviate the financial burden on their citizens, such as waiving taxes or levies or transportation and goods on goods and services. Mandate the House Committee on Petroleum Downstream and Legislative Compliance to ensure compliance and report back to the House within two weeks for further legislative action. I so submit, sir. Any seconder to this motion? Honorable Kelechi. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker, for doesn't protecting matter. me. You understand. Mr. Speaker, the minority the are trying to, to harass people. He's uh, been intimidated by your... Uh, Mr. Speaker, this motion has been taken over by events based on the resolution and the directives of this House. Mm. This House, I could remember, established a committee to look holistically the oil industry, the, the, the issues surrounding it, uh, establish a joint committee between the House and the Senate to look at all these issues. And God so kind, the minority leader is a member of that committee. Okay. So it's like, it's like we're turning the clock, the clock hand behind and trying to complicate the resolution, the directives, and the workings of that committee. Because it's part of the resolution of the House to look at, it, to look at these issues when the TOR, the terms of reference, was given to that committee, which I am a member, which the minority leader is a member. Okay, what is your point of order, Abdul Saman? Uh, please. Honorable members, Yusuf Gagdi, PhD, is my name. I represent Panshinkanke Kanam, federal constituency of Plateau State. Mr. Speaker, yes, it is a nice motion, very perfect and well fitted in these chambers because it is a motion that speaks for Nigerians and the situations that Nigerians are passing through. Mr. Speaker, just to remind this House of our primary responsibility. We know, but for the purpose of stating the obvious, we are to make laws for peace, order, and good governance. And what is good governance? The interest, the livelihoods, what Nigerians should benefit, it what is being defined as a good governance. So therefore, when we are to speak for Nigerians, 
to call the attention of government in doing things in such a manner that should improve the life of Nigerians, Mr. Speaker, that is apt. It's allowed. And more so, this is a chamber that is meant for people to ventilate their opinions, whether you agree with one another or you do not agree with one another. At the end, the position of your law prevailed. I'm lost a little bit that I want my colleagues to think within the line of the last speaker, including the motion mover at the same time. Nobody is against any moves that will better the lot of the Nigerian people. Mr. Speaker, we are here to represent our people. The interests of those local people on the street, this is what we are here for. So, PIA is a creation of the National Assembly. It's a creation of this House of Representatives. The sector is being deregulated. But in times of debating on how to adjust the speed limit of government to coming to the aid of the common man on the street, we should avoid politics. We produce an act, a bill, here in the Ninth Assembly, signed by the President. It becomes a law. And the sector is being deregulated by that law. And what is deregulation? Have we studied the deregulation? But again, in as much as a law exists, the consequences of the discharge of that law on the common man must be addressed. And we must speak about it. And I think that is the intention of this, mo of this motion. So I'm calling our attention. One, does the regulation allow the price of petroleum products to be different in Lagos, in Abuja, in Jos, in Casina, in Gombe? If the regulation allow that, why uh, is the law, PIA bill that is being passed, is now an act? Is it being respected by the public office holders appointed by this government to ensure decorum in that sector? If it is not, Mr. Speaker, our priority is on the suffering that our citizens are being felt and are being faced on the street. It is very important for us to draw a line where the interest of our citizen is being subjugated to all kinds of things. We try to come to the aid of the people. And again, Mr. Speaker, our colleagues should equally consider if there was a position mandating a committee to do this job, there is no gain say, read my ruling, deregulating on an issue that decisions have already been taken about. Thank you and God bless you. I represent the good people of Unjiko, Kano, Chadunukofia from Anambra State. I want to say that I'm totally in support of this motion as it were. I want to draw the attention of all of us that in this recent past, the federal government gave a minimum wage of uh, 70,000 a month. And just a week or two ago, there's an increase of fuel uh, price. And I'm telling you from personal experience, my driver, I approved his transport of 3,000 uh, transportation a day has come up with a bill of 6,000 transportation a day just to come to work. And all these things is affecting the entire stress of our people. What does this dovetail to? We cannot transport food from our constituents or our constituents cannot transport their pro produce from the farm to market with a much lesser cost. The increases of food in this country, somebody who is earning 70,000 a month, his 70,000 cannot last him for three days in this country, in the same government, the same policy. I want to thank God for the life of uh, Aliku, Aliku Dankote, who 
has, through other investors, have come up with a refinery. I want us to pressurize on the government, because not all countries that produces uh, petroleum are in OPEC. We need to review our OPEC uh, policy. We mustn't be in OPEC, because the only thing that will solve this problem of uh, uh, petroleum increase is to sell, to use what we have to solve our problem. In other words, I'm advocating that NMPC, the government, should, as a matter of policy, Mr. Speaker, to sell our crude oil we produce to Dankote at a reduced foreign exchange. Because, of, uh, because their hands are tied, we will have to review the policy we have with uh, uh, OPEC. We mustn't be there. We have crude oil. Dankote must be giving our crude oil at a reduced foreign exchange, not on international standard. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Patrick? Thank you, Your Excellency. Mr. Speaker, I'm a proud son of Akwaibom State. My contribution is simple. Let me first and foremost commend the Minority Leader for coming up with this motion. It is particularly very urgent and it touches directly on the welfare of Nigerians. But then, we cannot make a caricature of the parliament by proliferating ad hoc committees to solve problems, whereas this same house has in its creation mandated a committee or an ad hoc committee to investigate issues or concerns in the petroleum industry. So let me say this in a hurry that I align with the submissions of my friend, Honorable Lumide Oshoba, that the motion in itself should be amended to reflect that in its relief, the ad hoc committee of this house, which is a joint committee of the house and the Senate, be mandated to look into these issues as raised in the motion moved by the minority leader. There is no need to belabor the issues because we are all aware that the issue with fuel increase in prices affects every Nigerian and affects the prices of goods at the market. And so we are at home with the issues, but then we should submit that the ad hoc committee of this house, which is a joint committee with the Senate, be allowed to look into these issues to help Nigerians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Every responsible, responsive government or public office holder must listen to the feelings and yearnings of the people that you serve. I will also want to say that laws are made for man, not man for law. Again, for every law, there is the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. I'm saying this because of the argument of PIA. Yes, PIA has provided for deregulation, but what is the spirit behind PIA? Is it the same spirit that Nigerians are feeling today? Was that the reason why we enacted PIA? No. The answer is clear that it is no. And therefore, in implementing every law, we must look at the spirit behind it. And that's why we are saying, yes, the regulation is part of what we have yearned for, but how do we implement it with less burden on the Nigerian people? And that is the essence of the motion that we have brought. So we are not saying that we should completely abandon the PIA that we have uh, passed as a law. But in implementing it, it must have human face. We must consider Nigerians in course of implementation. Now, aside that, we have a joint committee. I'm not particularly averse to amending the prayers of the motion. 
but also be aware that the Joint Committee of this House and Senate is not servicing the House alone. The House is debating this issue this morning, and I believe that a resolution of the House should be implemented by the House. Yes. And so we should look at it from that angle. Senators are not here. They are not making contributions in this debate. I don't know how right. Leader, um, I assure you, this is a common issue and they uh, will make it work. We will talk to the Senate counterpart and ensure that this particular aspect is integrated in the deliberations of the Joint Committee. So, but, please go well. ahead and move. But my dear colleagues, finally, I want to pray and urge us that in the interest of our nation, as Nigerians and as parliamentarians, that there is need for us to support this motion to ameliorate, reduce the sufferings of our people. Thank you, sir. So are you moving for the amendment to refer this um, no, 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 no. motion to an adult committee? I'm moving, sir. Amendment. <clears throat> amendment. I, I just want to be guided with the position of the minority leader because you didn't talk... Um, I'm not moving for an amendment, but what I have just said is that whatever decision the House takes, mm. I will comply with the majority decision. Amendment. Amendment. Anyone who wants to amend? Two colleagues, I remain Abdul Samad Desuki, representing Kebe Tambuel from uh, Sokoto State and one of the co-sponsors of uh, this all-important uh, motion uh, to support uh, the Nigerian people. <clears throat> My amendment is that prayer six, the prayer six here reads that the House Committee on Petroleum Downstream and Legislative Compliance to ensure compliance and report back. My amendment is we take it from that committee and move this motion to the committee, the ad hoc committee, the House of the Joint House. Uh, no, no, no. Honorable Speaker, sir, my amendment, sir, is we move it to the ad hoc committee that was set up by this chamber. That is what I'm moving. It's not joint, no, it's the House Committee. Any House seconder House. to this? A yes. seconder. Instructed is to second because it was already proposed. So I second the amendment that this motion be moved to the Joint Ad Hoc Committee. <laughs> motion for the third reading of the bill HB 957, HB 105, HB 11, and HB 1269. I so second. Those eyes have it. Clark. Honorable Manuzoro and Amos, are you parading yourself for photograph or what? Honorable Lillian, can you sit properly and sit responsibly? Oh, there, please. Oh, there. Honorable Desuki. The hardship currently ravaging the service of Nigeria's existence seems to be getting to the attention of the House of Representatives. Hence, this call. Record that since the emergence of President Tinubu, Tinubu as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and since he announced the removal of West subsidy, the economic situation of the country has never remained the same. This has further launched Nigerians into poverty, leading to severe pain, inflation, and forcing many to fall out of business. The House of Rep, in their recent plenary, urged the President to return the price of fuel to and look into the hunger ravaging the nation. 